Welcome inside another magical episode of the Agenda, an action-packed episode, Sarah. A lot of stuff going on. There certainly is. The future has never been brighter, and we're here to help keep you up to speed and provide some clarity. I like the sound of that. Let's take a look ahead. <laughs> Are you spring cleaning yet? If so, gather all of the household chemicals and other waste that you can't normally put on the curb for collection. Keyport St. Lucie Beautiful makes it easy for PSL residents to dispose of all this stuff at the Household Hazardous Waste Collection and Tire Amnesty Day. Safely drop off and dispose of items like ammunition, automotive fluids, computer and electronics, oil-based paint, and drain cleaners. For the first time, residents also will be able to drop off cooking oil and grease. It will be poured into a tank and the oil will be recycled into biofuel. Because we want to provide clean, recyclable material, we are asking residents to remove bones or chunks of food, provide containers no larger than five gallons that must be labeled cooking oil, and please don't mix it with any other liquids. Another new feature this year is the addition of tires to the accepted list. Residents can bring up to four tires to drop off for disposal. All participants must be residents of Port St. Lucie. A full list of what is accepted and not is available on the city's website. Make sure you wear green when you drop off your hazardous household waste because you'll want to make your next stop the city's annual St. Patrick's Day Festival. The city's Parks and Recreation Department is once again teaming up with the friendly sons and daughters of Ireland for this two-day salute to Irish culture. It all takes place at Village Square outside the Mid-Florida Credit Union Event Center. Saturday's event kicks off with the annual St. Patrick's Day Parade. Traditional culinary delights will be accompanied by Irish dancing, displays, activities, and carnival rides. Can you believe that the Port St. Lucie Botanical Gardens has been blossoming in the heart of PSL for a decade? When the Botanical Gardens opened to the public in 2010, more than 800 people flocked to check it out on its first day. We would love to see that many people and more come back to the gardens for its 10-year anniversary celebration. If you haven't been in a while, come and see how much has changed and grown. During this free special event, you'll be able to explore every nook of the gardens and talk directly with docents about what makes each part special. You'll also enjoy live music by Thunder Road, the same band that performed at the gardens opening day. They took a leap of faith to put um, trust in a bunch of volunteers mm -hmm. to do what they said they thought they wanted to do. Yeah. And um, here we are, 10 years later, yeah. celebrating that benchmark. Grab your sunglasses and join us at the 2020 Citizen Summit, where we'll all be focused on PSL's bright future at this fun, interactive event themed 2020 Vision. We want residents to stay engaged with us as the City Council updates its strategic plan, which is Port St. Lucie's roadmap to the future. This is a continuation of the community conversation that began in 2018. Last year, we welcomed more than 600 people at our annual Citizen Summit who were eager to let us know what they think about the strategic goals. This is not your ordinary public meeting. Participants will be able to walk through fun, interactive booths geared towards each of the goals of the city's strategic plan. And don't leave the kids at home. We want their feedback too, and there will be civic-related activities geared towards those six years old and up. We look forward to hearing our residents' vision for the city's future. Most Floridians know just how annoying it can be to keep Brazilian peppers under control in their yards and property. Recently, staff from PSL's Utility Systems Department worked with researchers from the University of Florida to combat Brazilian peppers at PSL's McCarty Ranch in a safe, eco-friendly way. The University of Florida the Indian River Research and Education Center and the St. Lucie County Extension Office of the University of Florida work together with the city of Port St. Lucie to deliver some insects for Brazilian pepper tree control. Today we released biological control insects for Brazilian pepper tree, the Brazilian pepper tree thrips. Uh, the insect is not a swarming insect, so it's a little tiny, almost microscopic, little black dot. What we do is we go to the areas where these plants are from, so Brazilian peppers, Brazil, and we look for insects that are feeding on our target plant. We then bring those insects back into specialized labs called quarantine facilities in the United States to be able to test them. The University of Florida had to prove that the insects were not going to be a problem. They couldn't be poisonous, toxic, they couldn't bite people, they had to be host specific to Brazilian pepper tree. These insects are not invasive, they are completely safe and will only feed on Brazilian pepper. We're never going to be Brazilian pepper free, 
but it's gonna be just another weapon in our arsenal against this invasive plant. So hopefully we'll use a little bit less herbicide when we manage these plants. It'll be a dollar cost savings, hopefully to the city of Port St. Lucie and to the taxpayers of the county. And we'll also serve to protect water quality, such as the beautiful lake that we see behind us here at McCarty Ranch. We've been doing biological control in Florida for over a hundred years. And we, so we have a lot of experience and a lot of really good success stories behind us. In terms of square footage, the largest building in the city of Port St. Lucie has officially opened its doors. We're sure you've seen the new Tamco building's colorful lights as you drive along I-95 near PSL's Southern Grove. City officials joined Tamco, the parent company of City Electric Supply, as they celebrated the ribbon cutting of this very impressive 411,000 square foot facility in tradition. They were given a special tour of the new facility that is helping to keep important manufacturing jobs right here in PSL. It's important for us to celebrate this moment and to keep working hard, smart, and together so that we can build off of what TAMCO helped us start and the Tradition Center for Commerce. The city launched its new 1PSL customer service platform back in October, and since then we've seen a theme emerge in the data we collect. Questions and issues surrounding swales has been the topic reported the most. With that data in mind, we sent our own Nicole Harisic out with our public works staff to see if we can provide our residents with some more information about this hot topic. Hey guys, I'm here with Vince from the Public Works Department and today he's going to tell me a little bit what he does and I bet you it's going to be swale. I'm Vince Hill with Public Works, uh, Cedar Port St. Lucie as Environmental Service. And what we're going to talk about is swell liner, cleaning, and maintaining it. So what is it that I'm actually going to be doing today? You're actually going to be doing what the guys does out in the field. Edging the swell liner, uh, scooping it out with the shovel, pretty much cleaning it out, blowing it out, and also doing repairs. All right, well, that sounds like a lot of work. I'm ready to do it. Is there anything I should kind of put on in terms of safety? Make sure you wear your safety glass to protect your eyes. Rubber boots, if it's water still in the swell liner, when you get there, you make sure you put your rubber boots on. And That's, then a, a safety vest, And of safety vest. All right, well, I'm excited to get out there. I gotta get suited up, and then I'll see you out there on the field. Let's do it. This is a swell liner repair, and uh, we wanna basically connect the liner to where water will come and flow down. You know, our main objective is to make sure water flows, uh, liners are open, um, and uh, try to keep it clean. Try to keep it as clean as we can. And we're probably going to have to pull up Any a little bit here straight down. to kind of get it to where any water could go straight down. That was quick. Oh yeah, it comes up quick. It's, it's yeah. down by usually six to eight pegs. Okay. What we're doing now is we're pegging all the liner down, trying to make a straight line. So if you um, noticed before, it was definitely crooked. Yeah, and now by eye, we got we got a pretty good straight line. You've seen how we do it, and now we're gonna watch you. All right. <laughs> there you go. And then it's crooked. But it's, it's, all right, it's all right. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Here we are, getting ready to use the blower to spread our debris out and uh, make it look like it's just grass here in this area. Thank you, Randy, for showing me around and for your crew today. We repaired this liner. I think it was a, definitely a huge learning experience for me. Mm. Anything that you want the homeowners to take away? The best thing I could say is basically just to uh, keep the liners clean even after we come through, you know, um, that's the best time to try to keep up with it. The best thing I could say is please don't drive on it. It knocks it out of, you know, which way the water's supposed to flow. And uh, this way, if you don't drive on it, it'll be straight, water should flow out. You keep it maintained, you shouldn't have a wet swale. And we appreciate having you here today. Oh, thank you. Thanks guys, it's a lot of hard work keeping those swales clean, but that's just what we do. Until next time, see ya.
We've already mentioned that the Port St. Lucie Botanical Gardens is about to celebrate its 10th anniversary. So when you attend the anniversary party, make sure you stop by the main entrance to admire the newly planted 150 year old olive tree. The tree was donated by GL Homes and installed in time for Arbor Day to honor late Mayor Bob Minsky. Our February River Nights event was a perfect opportunity to learn all about the great improvements coming to PSL's riverfront. We held a kickstart park party at River Nights to celebrate the start of several projects near the St. Lucie River. These included the Riverwalk Boardwalk extension, wow playground design, historic homes renovation, riverfront restaurant development, and overall improvements at the site of the future riverfront park. We were partying all around in PSL in February, especially at the Styx concert at the Mid-Florida Credit Union Event Center. More than 2,000 tickets were sold to this fantastic live show that kicked off the Event Center's new We Love Lucy concert series. The multi-platinum classic rock band kept the audience thoroughly entertained as they performed many classics like Come Sail Away and Mr. Roboto. The concert series aims to bring national acts to PSL. You can still buy tickets to Little River Band, which will perform in November. Stay tuned because we expect to have another exciting announcement coming soon. The city is happy to have the support of Mid-Florida Credit Union in bringing more events like this to PSL in the future. In case you missed it, in January, the Port St. Lucie Civic Center officially became the Mid-Florida Credit Union Event Center. Our partnership launched with a celebratory ribbon cutting and the unveiling of the new sign. Mid-Florida has agreed to pay the city almost $200,000 each year for five years for the naming rights, with an option for a five-year renewal. The city, meanwhile, will retain ownership and operation of the center with plans to continue expanding the venue's special event, convention, and entertainment business. Spring in PSL means it's time for our friends at the New York Mets to play ball right here at newly named Clover Field, formerly known as First Data Field. And just in time for spring training, the city, St. Lucie County, Mets leaders, and Mets legend Mike Piazza were all on hand for a major announcement in January. The street out front of the stadium is now known as Piazza Drive. PSL's Jobs Corridor at Southern Grove is one of Florida's most unique opportunities for large-scale manufacturing, logistics, and retail development. It has the largest swath of development-ready vacant land in all of South Florida. And it fronts over four miles of Interstate 95 with interchanges at both Tradition Parkway and Becker Road. So when we asked our residents for their input on a master plan for this area, they were not shy in responding. More than 200 people participated in a public workshop on Southern Grove in January. Their feedback and ideas will be taken into consideration as the city works with the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council to develop a master plan for the more than 1,100 acres. The community workshop was an opportunity to share ideas on topics like naming and branding this area, identifying a location for an entertainment and cultural area, and desired recreational and entertainment options. Citizens will have another chance to share ideas about Southern Grove at the February 29th Citizen Summit. Port St. Lucie, you know what time it is. It's time to mark your calendar. Get an in-depth look at city departments at the City Council's Winter Retreat on February 26th through the 28th at the Port St. Lucie Community Center. Each city department will share its new five-year business plan with the City Council at this meeting that will be aired live on PSL TV 20 and the city's website. We mentioned it earlier in the show, but the New York Mets spring training begins February 22nd at Clover Field in St. Lucie West. There's no better time to get outside and enjoy America's pastime. Check out the Mets website for the full season calendar. Be on the lookout in your mail for an invitation to participate in the U.S. Census. When you receive it, you can follow the instructions and go online to quickly complete the form. By participating, you are helping to ensure the city receives its fair share of federal funding. Many important community projects are funded with federal dollars based on census data. This month's employee spotlight is a little different in that it isn't focused on an individual employee, but instead an entire department. And what they were able to do for a very special young lady. Working with the Make-A-Wish Foundation, staff from PSL's building department pooled their own money to help grant a wish to 13-year-old Bree Elmer. The initial request was to pay for the permitting fees for a fence around her backyard, but the building department wanted to do a little bit more to lift the spirits of this beautiful girl and her family. Building department staff joined together with a few local contractors and friends to gather enough money to grant another wish for Bree. 
They presented her with an all-expense paid trip to Discovery Cove in Orlando to go swim with the dolphins. Happy Wish Day, Bree. The building department staff was honored to be a part of your special day. To stay strong because at the end of a dark, dark road comes something amazing like this. It's gratifying to us to know that we're creating this level of hope, strength, and joy, and something that she's going to be able to use for many years to come. We're out of time for this episode, but make sure you follow us on all the major social media platforms for constant updates on what's happening in your hometown. And if you have any questions about the topics covered in this episode, just visit the city's website at cityofpsl.com. He's Benjamin Elliott. And she's Sarah Prohaska. See, See you, you next time. time.